Are they deaf? We wonder. But they're not. Because they can hear whatever they plug into. Do you understand that? Same is true with you. You can't hear the voice of God speak truth into you if you're plugged into other voices that are filling your head. You've only got two ears, and you've only got one mic. You understand that? So that's something I want you to understand. And so, basically, the Bible says it like this. It says, where you plug into is a choice. You can choose to plug into things that speak death into you, that speak condemnation, that speak guilt into you. You can plug into things that speak depression into you. You can plug into things that speak temptation to you. You can plug into things that speak sin. You can plug into any number of things. Or you can plug in to God, to God's people, to God's house, to God's word, to God's promises, to God's growth, not thinking, to God's plan for your life. See, God says it like this. He says, I have a purpose and a plan for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you, to do some amazing things for you. But he says, I can't do that if you won't draw near to me. He says, if you'll draw near to me, he says this in Jeremiah 29, look it up. He says, uh, Jeremiah 19, he says, if, you, if you'll draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. That's what he says. If you'll plug into me, I'll plug into you and I'll fill you and I'll provide everything you need. Or you can say, you know what? I can trust God or I can say, I just need to work on it. I need to work for it. Now, in, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, here's what it says. Go to verse 11. It says this. It says, now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we can obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No. The word is very near to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, this is what God said to them. He said, see, I set before you today. I set before you today Life and prosperity or death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you're entering to possess. He says, plug into me, man, plug into me. I meet so many single people. They say, I just want to meet the right person. And they do everything they can to try to meet the right person. They go to playafish.com. They go to christianmatch.com. They go to eHarmony. They go all these different places. Christian Cafe. All, and, and, and I'm not saying that, that that's a bad thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to try to meet other people. But I'm saying God's plan is not for you to go searching for His purpose for your life. He says, it's, my purpose for your life isn't a vocation. It's not a man or a woman. It's not relationships. It's not a job. It's not any of those things. He goes, the plan is me. He says, if you'll just plug in to me. He says, if you will seek me, I'll add all those things to you that you need. When you need them. I love, I love the singer that says, he may not come when we want him. But he's never late. He's always right on time. He is. I remember I was 27, 28 years old. I wasn't married yet. I was like, man, is this ever going to happen? And then I began to think something was wrong with me. I had different people that I dated. And, and you know, the first two months you dated, but you think this is the one. And they weren't the one. And I started thinking maybe just it was me. I wasn't the one. You know, and then I start thinking about it, but Lord, you know, I want children. I want children so bad. I've tried to want children since I was a kid. And I'm 27, 28 years old. And I'm not even dating anybody that I'm serious about. And I started to wonder, is it too late? And I remember at 24, I started to think, maybe it's a little late here. 25, it's a little late here. Then you start going 
go in places to try to get you. Then you start kind of reaching. Then you start kind of like trying to overreach. You find yourself in places you shouldn't be. You find yourself in conversations with people that you probably shouldn't be in conversations with. You find yourself starting to settle whenever it's like, you know what, I shouldn't settle. But you start to settle because you think, what if there's no one else? This is better than nothing. You know? Good guy, I plan. And I remember I just had to step back. And every, every, every relationship I started to get in, as soon as I knew it wasn't the right person, and it was hard, so I would just, I would step back and I said, I think it's better to be alone than to be with the wrong person. Amen? So, 29 years old, I meet the right person. And two years later, I have a child. 18 years later, it'll be 19 years this June. 19 years this June. Four children, 16, 15, by, by this summer, 13, and seven. Four kids. God knew. God knows. But I can plug into all those other ways to find things. Or I can just say, you know what? If I'm alone, I'm alone. Paul is alone. Paul said it's better to be alone. Maybe I'm supposed to be alone. It's not about whether I should be alone or I should be married. It's about I should be willing to do whatever he wants. Be that single or not. Just like Job. Job said, you know what? Though I have no cattle in the barn, no hay in the field, though I have nothing. Still, I will praise you until I will worship you. And that's what was so great about Job. Then he gave him everything and did his son. But watch what he says here in verse 17. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live among the land, live along the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This is what he said. He said, this day, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now, choose life so that you and your children may live, and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice, and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life. And he will give you many years the land you swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Choose life. Choose life. You're going to leave here today. You're going to go get in your car. And you're going to be able to make choices about what voices you to get in your head. And I'm not saying that if you listen to secular music, it's a sin, it's horrible, or anything else like that. I could probably sing the words to most songs on certain stations, you know, that I know. But I've also got my CDs of preachers that speak into my life, to teach. I also know what programs run at what time, like on Cave Right. 7.40 a.m., I know when David Jeremiah is on. He speaks into my life. He speaks, he speaks into my life in a way that's just amazing. And there are different teachers. I love to listen to Jack Hayford. I love to listen to David Jeremiah. I love to listen to different ones. I love to listen to Mark Rutland. I love to listen to Jake Dobson. They speak into my life and they speak life and I learn and I grow. And they tell me who I am. They help me define who I am through God's Word. And then I don't need other people to do that because I can read God's Word. He gave me His Word and I can do that through His Word. You see it? Now, there's one other thing though I want, I want to show you about this. Uh, let me get this right here. This is the last thing I want to make. I learned a long time ago you get in trouble here if you tip over a candle. Yeah. <laughs> now, here's what I've learned. A little audience participation here. Okay? How do you know how do you know her? <laughs> Let me tell you a little something else you need to know. People plug into who they're going to plug in when they leave this house. You're going to plug in wherever you want to plug in. But when people come through those doors, 
It's with the hope and the prayer that somebody plugs into them. You understand that? And as much as we need to have life spoken into us, we are called to speak life into other people. The voices of the world, I don't know what the voices of the world are saying here. I don't know. I don't live for a week. I don't know what kind of voices that she hears. I know what God has to say about her. I know that God believes that she's of great value. God believes, he says, you know what? You know she's of great value. God, God would say to you, you're my idea. It's why your DNA is different than everybody else's DNA. Your height, your hair color, your eye color, everything about you was his idea. I know that he would tell her if he were here, I love you more than you could ever, ever know. I know that if he were here right now, he would tell you, no matter what you go through, I am always, I'm always there. I know that's what he would tell you. <clears throat> and when people walk through those doors, they want to hear what God has to say. But many times, the best things that God has to say are through his people. And so we literally get the option of taking the end of somebody's court anytime we want when we walk in those doors and speaking into their life. Anybody want to come speak into hers? Anybody? Something you would say? Yeah.